Hello, Damien speaking. Oh, uh, hey, how you going? Um, yeah, hey, just wanted to have a yarn about that motor. Um, sorry if you can't hear me, there's sandblasting right next to me. What do you know about it? What, can you tell me what you understand about what happened to it? Yeah, yeah, we're, we've got a 57 foot tall. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this actually had a 3406 in it, and it sunk. Um, so we put a truck 8x5 in it, um, but we, long story, we went to, we were just about to launch. We pulled the cylinder head off and then we found that the pistons were cracked and the liners had started sinking down. And I've got a highlight, but I don't think it'll take the weight, so I'll probably just bring the little truck and come down in it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, if I, if I can confirm that it still spins, then I know nothing too catastrophic happened. Everything's probably repairable. That sounds really good. Thank you so much. Cheers. Good on you. See ya. Awesome. With little money, lots of support, Kiwi ingenuity and good old blood, sweat and tears, we're creating a community expedition and research boat built and run by volunteers from around the world because life is too short not to fight for your dream. I took a stroll downtown this evening When I heard music echo through the night The same old songs that I heard the night before So I started running so I wouldn't be too late Up on the bow brew peg, I need to start getting the chain out of the locker. Got to do a heap of work underneath the deck here. So I'm going to drop the anchor using the brake that we built on the new winch. So I can't obviously power it down with the hydraulics. But that's the whole point of this brake. So we can just drop the anchor without the need for a motor full stop. Okay, so last time I was up here, welded on this little chain stopper fitting. I basically just had it all bolted together with a shackle so that um, that's my safety. So that nothing can come loose. But time to get rid of that. Drop the anchor over the front. The plan is to strip out the chain from this room down in here, get rid of the um, rope, the chain, the water that's right down that very bottom part there, and get into that room and start building a nice uh, storage system for that chain. As part of our launch prep, I need to make sure that the chain is not gonna bash the anchor locker apart and rip all the paint off, so we're actually gonna put a pipe system in there. I'll show you what that means in a sec, but in order to get in there and do the measurements, I need to get rid of that chain.
Right, that's looking a little bit less daunting down there. All right, let's get some junk out of this room. Welcome to the echo chamber. This is Brewpeg's anchor room. Originally, Brewpeg had a large shelf in here that the chain used to drop down onto and then it would drain over the side. The trouble was is that shelf was too far forward for where the anchor winch is now. So the chain would pile over the back and fall onto the floor. So that whole shelf came out, it was never gonna work. What I need to do is basically build a better system. So the chain itself comes down through a hole in the, in the deck here just here in the hawse pipe and it falls down into this area around about the center of the room. What I wanna do is build a big plastic pipe that all of that chain falls into, and then it can gravity feed over the side. So the bottom of that pipe will be above the waterline, and any water that goes into that pipe will then head out over the side, and I don't need any pumps to do this. It's all gonna be by gravity. Um, I will have a pump in the bottom of the room here that deals with any water that comes in by the hatch or anything that spills over or whatever. This room will still have the ability to pump water out, but it's not gonna be um, the sole way of getting water out of this room. Okay, potential problem. The height from the deck head up here down to where the bottom of the pipe needs to sit, about here, is only a metre. So I don't have a lot of physical height to pack all of that chain in. So I may have to move the pipe back a little bit. So easiest way to figure out where that pipe's gonna fit is trim off like an inch section of that pipe and start physically fitting it in here and see where is it actually gonna work. So most people probably haven't seen this yet, but this is actually one of the tubes that they slid over the steel pipes for the new marina build. When the guys had stripped down the barge ready for transport to its next job, Dane spotted something very interesting on the top. Many people would see just a big black tube. I see an anchor locker well chain holder gadget thing. Dame talked to Ben who owns the barges and he said we could have it. Amazing, thanks Ben. <laughs> You might remember we found a couple of pipes at the recycling centre that we thought we could use for the anchor well to hold the chain. This one was quite strong but the diameter is pretty small and this one here is a great size but it really is quite weak. It's got the strength of the ribs on the outside but mm, we're still a bit hesitant to use it. We think it'll probably crack after a little while. There's a lot of force going on with the chain moving around when we're at sea. One's too hot, one's too cold but this is just right. If you have a wee look here it's lovely and thick and plenty of diameter. What I'm hoping to do is slice a bit of this off. You can sort of see how thick this is coming in here. It's like an inch thick. It's, it's incredibly robust. I believe it's HDPE. I'm not 100% certain, but I believe it's HDPE. Um, so nothing sticks to it, so you can't glue anything to it, but it's also something that's going to last forever. There's no way the chain's going to wear this out. Um, these marinas have a 40 year guaranteed lifespan, so if I can get half that for the chain locker, I reckon we'll be peachy. I have no idea how to cut this, so I'm just assuming a timber saw. I guess we'll find out in a moment. Okay, that worked. Yoik! Doesn't like heating up. All right, I think we changed that blade. This is the blade I was just using. I use this for aluminium, so it has quite fine teeth. Cuts really beautiful in aluminium, but it's just overheating. So I'm gonna change down to a bit of a, more of a timber saw, a bit of a hardier beast, and hopefully I'll chunk it out without getting it too overheated. All right, let's try all of that again. Bang. Hey. 
Boat Next Jewel has just put a new X15 Cummins in. First time it's been running. That's cool. Okay. That's what you get with Cummins. Invisible smoke. That's trimmed off and it fits in there beautifully. Now we just need to make a stainless mount for there. So I'm just heading into the scrapyard in town to see if I can find some stainless that's going to work. I want to build this whole base out of stainless. I've got my disc thing that I chopped off before. Uh, right, let's go and see if we can find any metal to fit. What I'm hoping is that they've got a piece of like six mil stainless. We have a winner. So there's a bunch of different size stainless sheets here, but this piece here, it's a bit of six mil, and it's about 10 mil wider than what I need. So I'm gonna get a square cut off the same size as what that um, pipe is. We'll trim it up and then that'll, that'll be the base. I'll grab a bit of this um, 100 by six. That's gonna form a structural members underneath. And then off to a completely different shop on the other side of town that has 100 by three. That's gonna form the, the ring that's gonna hold this tube in. But I also just got a phone call from uh, one of the electrical places in town. They've been doing some repairs on my welder. When it got dropped the other day from the crane, me and Jess were up the front and the crane let go, flattened it on the deck, all the plastic broke. Um, I managed to get new plastic covers for the, for the welder. Um, I've just been told that that's ready to pick up as well. So go and get that at the same time. I should have everything I need to put this thing together now. So I've got some pretty heavy duty stainless for the base. I'm gonna do a lip. I was gonna do it uh, 100 mil, four inches tall, but I, I can't get 100 by three, so I'm gonna do it three inches tall. So it's 75 mil tall uh, by three millimeter wide, and I'll do a ring around the base. I've also got some fittings to weld into the bottom that allows me to do a pretty um, big diameter drain. Um, I, th I think the drain in the front of the boat is an inch and a half. It's kind of a common size on boats. Um, I'm not sure, if it's any smaller, I'm gonna make it bigger. And if it is inch and a half, I'm just gonna go with whatever's sort of welded into the boat. Um, but I wanna have that drain really free flowing. I want any rubbish that gets into that, um, into, into this tank that I'm building, I want it to be able to just get out over the side of the boat really quick so that I can get junk, like mud and silt and stuff, away from the chain as fast as possible. Because chain, once it starts rusting in your anchor locker or well, it just turns into a big ball of muck. Um, and I'm trying to eliminate that in this build if I can. Ah, that's sounding gorgeous. Guys, I got it running beautiful. All right, with my slab of six mil stainless, I'm gonna mark this out. I don't know quite how I'm gonna cut this yet, whether I do it with a plasma, which isn't working crash hot at the second, or a grinder. We'll have to figure it out. I've had a think. I was going to just draw it on like this, try and figure out the centre and cut it. That's not going to work. I want it more accurate than that. So what I'm thinking is find a centre, just using this. That way I know my disc is going to fit in this block of stainless. I might have a little bit more wastage, but that's okay, because I didn't have a lot of material to play with anyway. What I'm thinking of doing, drilling a hole down the center, I'll weld a bolt onto the bench, it means I can spin this whole thing, and I'll be able to get a perfect circle 
and I think I'll probably use plasma on this. Plasma's not working crash hot, but I think once I can get it started, it stays running. It's just the, the pilot arc isn't going great on it. Don't know why, we've been having some issues with it, but anyway, pilot arc's having a freak out. So once I get it started, I'm good to go, and I'll just wind it around by hand, and I should be able to get a pretty accurate circle. Here's something no one was expecting. This is not round. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just make a beautifully round, perfect circle, but that won't work. This thing measures 20 mil difference. It's 20 mil ovaled out. So it's like, there's quite a big difference. And I thought maybe I could squash it and actually get it round, but I'm gonna have to be like hauling on this big ass strong piece of plastic to try and get that round. I don't think I'm gonna manage that. So what I think I'll do is actually freehand it with the plasma, Go kind of go back to the original idea, but basically freehand it with the plasma, but use the spinny thing because I think that's gonna make life pretty easy. Radio, let's see if this MIG welder still works. Right, that's gonna work. Slight change of plan, we're going vertical. Okay, vertical was good to get it started, but it's not accurate enough to keep this running correctly long term. So I think I'll go back to going flat and just rotate it around and grunt it. Because if I can, I can do that. Better. Let's go with that. Right, clamps. Right, that clamp is pretty awesome, isn't it? Right.
it's not holding in this corner. So what I'm thinking, I'll give it a weld up here and just cut it. basic shape done. Will it fit? No, but squeezable. All right, that's gonna work. This thing's gonna warp if I weld the inside, so maybe we should weld the outside first. Yeah, good. Radio, I've swapped the gas over. I was using a blend that has oxygen and CO2, which is not great for stainless, but it's fine to tack it. Uh, we're using 100% argon now. Well, that's running really shit. While that thing cools down, which may take three days, uh, it's time, I think, to go over the back and chop up the pipe to be the right size. I'm sort of in two minds as to whether to double continuous weld that. I probably don't need to, because if it leaks, it's only gonna leak slightly and it really isn't gonna matter. It'll just go down into an area that gets pumped out. But kind of the anally retentive part of me says double continuous weld it. I wasn't super chuffed with how straight I managed to get this when I cut it freehand. So, with the help of the marina lads, I've built a thing which I'm hoping will make it straighter. That's pretty good, eh? Is it gonna roll? <laughs> I'll lift it if you wanna put it. Hey! As you can see, the Dirt Lave Model 1.0. It turns quite well. It is sliding that way. Maybe we just cut really fast. See how it goes. So I was thinking of, you know, put the saw somewhere rigid and spin this around, but I don't know if you can believe this. Even though it's a brand new lathe, there's actually some wear in those beds, and it's not running true, so it would cut quite a nice thread, but it won't actually cut through it. But what I have been able to do, use the old paper trick thing where you put a big piece of paper, in this case plastic, a piece that's not quite long enough, but I can get a pretty good analog as to a straight line. So I'm gonna do that on both ends, and then just cut it, freehand it almost.
here you can see Dame's cutting three points, holding points that he's left so that the pipe won't fall apart until he's ready. Annoyingly it's not square, but that might actually be to our advantage because I don't think the ribs are square to the deck. So we'll go up and we'll see. Time to start fitting this thing. And you could look at that and say, hey, that doesn't fit. Or you could go, maybe that hatch is too small. After witnessing our half inch rattle gun coughing and wheezing, one of our Patreons He's asked to remain anonymous. Decided that we probably needed a better set of tools for this um, engine job. And he sent something from our wish list, which looks like an absolute beast. three-quarter Ingersoll Rand rattle gun. Thank you, you amazing menu. Interesting thought, I was originally just gonna cut this, basically this hatch off and make a bigger hole so that I could drop all of this down here and then weld the deck back up. I can't do that. I've just noticed that they welded this lip here is pretty much bang on the bulkhead. So there's no room to plasma to cut along the back and not get into the cabin itself. So I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is grind uh, right the way around the edge here and take the hatch off the deck and then I'm going to cut the deck itself bigger to do like a big sort of square or circle or something like that um, to get this gadget down into that anchor room and then I'll just weld the whole lot back up again. Now that we got rid of that obstruction, I can't go any further back. So my plan is to basically cut something that will allow that to clear. But I also want to cut it far enough away from uh, the original welds and everything like that so that it's pretty straightforward to weld back in. I don't want any issues to try and get weird welds and corners and stuff. So what I'm thinking, that's roughly center, isn't it? Somewhere there. I'll mark where this actually comes to and then I'll mark a cut. Here's a template that I made earlier. I think this is going to work a treat by utilising this. I want to have curves and things to weld in. I don't want to weld in something that's sort of straight and right angles and whatever. So let's go here. So what we've got that's there and there, roughly. So I've gone through and drawn where ribs come through. So I've got one coming there, one coming over here, a little one here, and a little one over there. Um, I think I could probably miss the one on the far right, but this one, this one, and this one here are all going to have to be cut off.
okay that came up pretty good I think I'll just go through now the grinder and just nip the welds off the other side um, for those ribs Ma or maybe plasma I don't know just see how we go but yeah either way got to do that before we can get that deck plate out I think it's time to probably give that a vent actually this shows the challenge so there's the cut you can sort of see the line going along there and there's the rib what I'm thinking of actually just lopping that rib off it's not going to matter too much that there's only that much there likewise this one here you can see this is quite a big structural member that I put in a while ago to brace under the anchor winch what I'm thinking is I'll plasma along either side so along this back side and along this side here uh, just to leave this one in place I do want to keep this one and then this one here is a bit of a piss ass weak little thing anyway I think I'll just cut that back on an angle and be done with it and then we're good to go dangly on that bit. Clear. The big test, which it should pass, but you know, let's just check. It has to fit that way. Oh yes, beautiful. All right, let's go throw the big pipe down there. Thankfully this thing is significantly lighter now that I've chopped it in half. ratchet strap tied around this thing hopefully with a bit of luck I'll be able to just haul on it It's in the hole, but it's hitting that ladder rung, so I'm going to cut that out, that top ladder rung there, get rid of that so that we can get this in and out easy. maybe, I don't know, 10 mil, 15mm too tall on this side. Oh. Um, maybe I shouldn't be so greedy and I should just cut 
cut it down slightly. I think it's also, this is the tall part as well, which doesn't necessarily make life easy. I'm out of time. I need to drive to Brisbane. So um, I'm leaving first thing in the morning to go down there because in Brisbane lies a new motor for Brewpeg. So I'm gonna go down and have a gander at that, see if it's worth us buying it. Um, I think it's probably gonna be a yes, but we need to be absolutely certain. Then we gotta start funding the rebuild. Um, it's a proper 400 horsepower marine engine. So um, it's an absolute sweet engine to have in Brewpeg if we can get it, if it all works out. It's a heck of a steal. Um, really, really good price, but still going to be probably $10,000 in total to rebuild this thing. So we're going to have to figure out how we do that. Um, we'll probably have more information come out on that soon, how you can get involved in that if you want to. Uh, but it also means that I'm not going to get that job up the front finished this week. Um, I have to, yeah, spend two days away. I've also been away this morning. Um, yeah, it's been a hectic week for us. Yeah.